we will continue our lesson on chapter 10, Inventory. Uh, we left off the previous lesson on the importance of the formula uh, for income statement. So the income statement uh, uh, prior to this chapter uh, could, have, could have been summarized by saying revenue minus expenses equals net income. But now we have a se another section within the income statement. So technically we have revenue minus cost of goods sold, which equals gross profit, and then gross profit minus expenses, which equal net income, uh, which can be summarized uh, uh, using uh, also this formula because you're looking at how to uh, calculate cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is basically beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory. So beginning inventory from uh, uh, beginning of the fiscal year and ending inventory at the end of the fiscal year and you should know also how much purchases you have made during the year. So how do we come to ending inventory? Well, we do a physical inventory count, which means that businesses uh, who are using this accounting system would have to determine the number of units left over uh, for each item that they're selling and then of course they know the price for that item that they have purchased it for. So taking a physical inventory can involve a lot of things including counting, uh, weighing or measuring each kind of inventory that you have on hand for that business. This count, once it's finished, will should give you the ending balance for the ending inventory which is an extremely important asset on the balance sheet as you know. Uh, in, and it's also needed to calculate the cost of goods sold, which in turn is needed for income statement. And we also need this ending balance uh, for the inventory to become the beginning inventory for the next year's inventory account. So we try to basically physically count this on the last day of the fiscal year. So if your fiscal year is ending on December 31, then you would count it on December 31. The next couple of slides will show how the inventory accounts are, have changed the look of balance sheet and income statement. So you can see from here that inventory is the, is the, uh, the third asset uh, in this list. You've got your cash account, which is bank then you've got your accounts receivable, and then you have your merchandise inventory. So this is how important it is. It, it is very, very liquid. You can sell it. Uh, that's what liquidity means, uh, if you recall from previous lessons, uh, that the, the quicker you can sell it, the more liquid it's considered. So inventory is very liquid, and it is higher considered higher uh, in, in the order of liquidity than some of the other assets. So uh, this is a, a, an important part of the balance sheet. Where is it shown on, call, on, on the income statement? Well, as I have been mentioning to you that we now have a new section called cost of goods sold. So you can see that you have a revenue account, then you have cost of goods sold section, and then you have the gross profit line, and then you've got your operating expenses. So expenses have been broken up into two kind of sections. One, you've got your cost of goods sold, and then you have your operating expenses. And the final number will be either a positive net income, or if it's a negative number, it will be considered a net loss. So just to summarize, cost is very, very significant for income statement, because it helps you understand how much profit you have left over um, after you take into account the cost of your items. Uh, for, for uh, 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 that inventory that you've been selling. So income statement is now prepared using two stages. One, you've got the revenue minus COGS, which is gross profit, and then you have gross profit minus operating expenses, as I just showed you in the previous slide. Limitations of the periodic inventory system. So this is all the periodic inventory system that we've been talking about. Uh, when we started talking about inventory, I hinted that there are two types of systems, periodic and perpetual, and we're going to be really talking about periodic. So what are some of the limitations? Well, the limit, number one, that you will not have accurate set of financial statements during the year, because during the year, you are not doing any journal entries for COGS or for anything else, so you don't know really what's happening during the year as far as inventory is concerned except that you've been recording purchases. 
Uh, this procedure is also very time consuming because at the end of the year, now you have to physically count the inventory that's left over. It also disrupts your normal business cycle or business routine because you have to build up to it, the fact that you're going to be physically counting. You have to uh, allocate certain staff members. You have to physically close the business. So it disrupts the way business is run. Summarize, to summarize what we have learned so far, the final inventory amount is included on the balance sheet as a short-term asset. The COGS, which is cost of goods sold, is included on the income statement. The inventory amount and the COGS amounts are not known during the, during the fiscal year. They are only really known accurately at the end of the fiscal year. COGS, for uh, the formula, one of the formulas that we talked about, COGS, cost of goods sold, can be calculated using beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory. So we will very briefly take a look at some of the accounting procedures for inventory. There are two accounts as we've talked about uh, which need to be used uh, throughout the year and at the end, inventory and purchases. The inventory account represents the beginning balance for the inventory throughout the year until you do the journal entry which is done at the end of the year after your physical count has been completed. So. The next couple of slides will give you journal entries as far as, uh, 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 as far as how these inventory transactions are supposed to be recorded. So we've talked a lot about the, uh, uh, the theory and the concept of inventory. Now let's take a look at some of the example journal entries. So when you buy inventory with cash, you're going to be debiting purchases and crediting bank. So purchases is the account that gets credited during the year. So here you have purchased $1,000 worth of inventory and HST of course on that is $130 and then you have credited bank because you paid cash for it. If you buy inventory on account, the only difference here is the accounts payable as you know. So you can see that you're going to be debiting purchases during the year. If there are any transportation costs associated with inventory because a lot of times when you buy inventory it has to be delivered. Sometimes the delivery costs are paid by you because you bought them and other times delivery costs are paid by the seller because they sold them. So it depends. If you are paying for it, you have to of course record the freight cost, the delivery cost, the transportation cost. All of this, these terms refer to, to transportation costs. So you would do debit either the purchases which is the actual inventory or the freight in which is the transportation cost. Depends on how you've been doing it for your business. Either of them is acceptable for us uh, but you would have to understand what the question is asking if it has a separate account for freight or what the business has been doing in the past. So debit purchases or freight in and debit HST recoverable because you're going to be paying HST and of course credit bank or accounts payable depending on the uh, on cash or if it's on account. So what happens when you actually sell inventory? Because the entire purpose for you is to buy and then sell. So what happens here? Well, you've received cash, right? That's the, the first thing. And part of that cash goes to HST payable. So you see debit bank is 1130 but credit HST payable is 130 and then you have credit sales which is a thousand so it's very simple uh, how you know you've been recording these entries for uh, for uh, the, since the beginning now so basically what you're doing is you're crediting the sales of the revenue account and you're crediting the HST payable account and you debit either the bank or the account receivable depending on if they paid you cash or they're paying you on account so what has changed but, uh, is the closing entries for inventory. So at the end of the year, what you're going to do is you're going to do these uh, a few journal entries. You're going to be crediting inventory and debiting capital. This is the to close the beginning inventory balance because you want to now clear the beginning inventory and see how much you have left over, which becomes your new beginning inventory. And then what you'll do is you will uh, uh, debit inventory and credit capital. So this is the amount that you have determined using physical count. 
So once you do the physical count, you come up with the inventory amount. So you do this as a second a closing entry. Then what you do is you have to take out all the purchases because purchases uh, needs to be zero by the end of the year. So for the purchases account, you do debit capital and credit purchases. Once these three journal entries are complete, basically what's happened is you are now showing accurate financial statements as far as your, uh, your uh, uh, income statement balance sheet is concerned using inventory. So uh, we have done a lot of uh, discussion around inventory and I've now given you some journal entries to think about as examples for your exercises and for your homework and your comprehensive problem. So I hope that uh, a lot of this is, is going to come in handy as far as your uh, learning is concerned and as far as your assignments and tests are concerned. So we will stop it here, we'll continue next time and as always remember ARTW, accounting rules the world. Thank you.